Exactly. Well, and I'm a big believer. I think everything I've done, I've always tried to be people focused, right? Mm -hmm. Um, From some of my, my, my first jobs were working um, in conjunction with uh, UAW line workers who were designing and building physical, you know, building cars. And the things that you see in terms of someone who's done this for 30 years, they can just look at a piece of metal and with their hands practically like smooth it out. And so, you know, the, the thing that you learn about the skilled trades is that the, there's just so much knowledge there. And if we can do anything to help make the lives of those who are putting their lives on the line and those who are, you know, working day in and day out in all weather conditions and all environments to give us power, water, clean air, especially after COVID, we've seen how critical it is, especially after what, you know, what just happened in Texas, the importance of these, these uh, creature comforts in, Mm. in, in just the society that we have today, it just can't be, cannot be overstated. And so it's just really great to be able to to take a step back and recognize that technology doesn't belong to everyone, innovation doesn't belong to everyone, and there's a chance to to really dig in on all levels. Yeah. Um, you know, I started designing power tools when I was in my 20s, and it was something where, you know, I, I had never worked in heavy duty construction, and I still haven't. And so I'm not the one who's, you know, climbing the power lines. I'm not the one who is uh, you know, out on this roof in Miami in a hundred plus degree weather. And so it's all about how you focus on the person who is going to be doing the task or the person who's getting that exposure and kind of elevating your craft and using it as a challenge for how do you continue to grow to mm-hmm. continue to serve them? Yeah. Being willing to be curious and being willing to challenge yourself and and create a culture in which others can challenge you or question you or help take things to the next level right that 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 idea um that i think comes from improv that that yes and oh that's so that's so interesting because um it comes up so much you know for me and in this line of work um and i think what's what's really powerful is that when you think about diversity it isn't just skin color. It isn't just gender. It isn't just the language that you speak. It's the trade that you're in. Um, if you think a AEC, right, whether you're an architect or, or an architect, an engineer, or a construction um, professional, you have a different mindset and maybe a different education and different background just based on what you specialized in. So there's diversity of education level. There's diversity of region. I once gave a, a talk at a, a major conference where I talked about diversity of region and you know, here's what materials are used in the Pacific Northwest to build with versus what's used in, you know, central Florida. Mm -hmm. And after the presentation, someone came up to me and they said, you know, this is a global conference, right? Like you realize like in Japan, we use bamboo for scaffolding. And so it was just, again, one of those moments of like, oh yeah, it's, it's completely different. And so again, there's just, I think we limit ourselves sometimes when we think diversity as you know, just cultural or what you can see, because you can see two people who look identical and one may have, you know, grown up in a, in a different country or a different, you know, trade or skill. And then you can also, when you think of diversity of age, that's a whole another opportunity for us to continue to, to grow. And I think the importance of inclusion is making sure that, you know, it's kind of the, the importance of not just checking the box and saying, oh, well, we have these people in our workforce, but do they have a voice? Do they have the ability to drive impact? And that's really where you start to, to make that difference on, on being diverse and being inclusive in a way that is useful. Todd, that's such a good question. And the idea of diversity of thought, diversity of, of leadership and perspective is so important, especially when we consider the labor shortage. So, you know, when you're thinking of how to bring people into this industry, when you're thinking of how to leverage the voices and the talent that you have, whether it's uh, investigating new technology or building your own technology. Um, you know, when you think of something like um, a, a new piece of software or a new piece of hardware, like a, a, a robotic total station, having the voice of not just your field crew and not just your VDC managers and not just your, um, you know, your IT support, 
having all of those voices at the table makes a huge difference. And that's what I think comes into play when we start to think about like recruitment and our labor shortage, because, you know, construction, the construction industry is so, you know, just there's so many challenges and such a small percentage of construction workers are considered, you know, in those minority classes. So how do we bring more women? How do we bring more underrepresented minorities into the conversation? And by doing so, we not only build stronger companies, but we also, you know, try to address that labor shortage and try to figure out ways that people can come together and be a part of our industry. Yeah. That's what we're doing. You know, none of us are here because this is such a lucrative industry that we can just, you know, lay our heels back and, and, and watch the money roll in. We are all working hard. So how do you make sure that you're working smarter and creating the right culture and the right strategy to go hand in hand? I think what's really exciting is that we're starting to see the shift from, you know, construction was get things done for so long. And then in the early 2000s, it became figure out how to survive when, you know, when we hit, we hit the, you know, 2008, 2009 timeframe. And then emerging from that, it became, oh, hey, technology has not, you know, splashed its, its magic on this, this genre. And now we've got, you know, thousands of context startups and we've got all this money going in. And I think what we're seeing now as we go into the twenties is we're seeing what has staying power. We're seeing what has that ROI. And so that I think is really exciting. And then two, the, the big push towards um, just driving the right decisions at the right time. And so I, it's so easy to say, oh, well, it's data, right? It's all about data, but it's not about data. It's about what that data brings you. And that's what's exciting is it's, you know, it's, it's seeing these point solutions emerge and mature to a point where they can interact with each other. It's seeing not just, again, you know, the, the ability to collect information, but what do you do with it? How can you drive decisions? And that's, mm -hmm. that's how we hit the bottom line.